Let me think of where I want to begin here. Okay, so here's here's the here's the basis and sort of the gist of what you're looking to do nutrition wise to get into really the optimal fat burning state. All right. The, the gist of it is that you're going to be on a um, low carb, all right, um, low to moderate quality protein, and then um, having a super high fat diet. And I'll, I'll kind of provide some values for that um, here in a second. And ultimately, I really believe, and you know, the research really supports that. Even anthropology supports that it is the most natural and and really ultimately ancestral way of eating. And, um, you know, I think whoever came up with the notion that the more meals a day you're supposed to eat, that's actually the best way to lose weight I, is, is really um, needs to be fired. All right. Because that just does not make any sense whatsoever um, that the more meals you eat, that that's a better way of doing that. Because all you're doing all day long then is jacking up your insulin um, and just confusing the heck out of your body. I always liken it kind of going back to caveman style. From the standpoint, and they've done studies that even compared to millions of years ago, um, um, the DNA has really changed less than, I think I saw somewhere as like less than 0.01% um, from you know the early Homo sapiens to now. Um, so meaning that what worked, how they lived and how kind of we were originally created and intended to live um, has not changed with really, you know, um, the only thing that's changed is what society has sort of created. So what, what do I mean by that is that th this th whole three, you know, th quote unquote, three square meals a day, like where did that come from? You know, if you think about a caveman um, and a cave woman, right, and cave children, <laughs> you know, like hunter gathering type aspect. Well, I mean, you would hunt and then whatever you killed, you would eat. And then once you were done eating it, you would store what you can and then you'd move on, right? And you might not have deer or whatever, saber-toothed tiger for weeks at a time. Um, or you might cap it across a patch of berries once every few months and, and partake and grab, again, grab what you can, enjoy what you can there, but then, but then you move on. So um, this we're really going to get back to more of an ancestral way of doing that because that's the best way. I mean, I can't imagine there was ever an obese caveman, right? Like, it's just I just physically can't imagine that. And again, anthropology and um, you know people who study that stuff say they you know they really didn't see things like heart disease and cancer. Now, they might have been you know going to die of something else, like not running into an area where you don't find food or a drought or you know um, the other types of you know that cause their lifespan to be shorter, but they weren't dying of disease, all right. So um, we got to get we got to get back to the again the original sort of design and creation. So um, for those of you that are on here, if you can do me a favor, um, go ahead and share this and like this for your friends. Um, it goes a long way towards really exposing people to this information um, that I may not be connected to. So go ahead and do that right now. Like, click like, or give me a heart, and then go ahead and click share too. All right. So the main goal is that we are going to be getting you into a fat burning state instead of primarily burning sugar for energy. All right. So if you, you, everybody on here, if you're on here right now, you want to be burning fat primarily for energy. Now the way you do that is to be supporting and fueling your body with what you want it to burn. All right. So if you want it to burn fat, well, you got to feed it fat. Okay. It's as simple as that. If you are feeding it sugar and carbs, then um, you're gonna, your body's going to be craving and wanting to burn sugar and carbs. However, you burn that extremely quickly. And so as soon as you go through that, you're going to be burning through that, right? So then your body's going to say, I need more, I need more, I need more. It's a short-term energy versus fat is going to be long-term energy. So there, I'm going to be going over at the seminar some, some specifics on how to figure out what your actual numbers um, need to be and how to test if you're truly burning fat or not. Um, but kind of the, the, sim the simplistic way of looking at this here for carbohydrates, okay, um, you're going to want to be, you're going to want to really start below 40 carbohydrates a day, all right, and really be under that number. Um, within that, you need to be doing zero grains and zero processed sugar. 
um, and then really minimal fruits too. If you're if you have any grains, even if you're staying below that number, you're totally just you know what you, you're 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 not going to get anywhere. You're going to spin your wheels. Um, now for postmenopausal women specifically, so that'd be women like kind of 40, 45, 50 plus. Um, to if if you're stuck metabolically. Um, most likely you got to get below 20 grams even, which is so little. I mean, even certain vegetables are going to, um, you know, put you over that real fast. So you're going to have to really do your homework and do your research on that. But the reason why most postmenopausal women, um, really have a hard time losing weight is because your body is so insulin resistant and just sort of hormonally dysfunctional that in order to move the needle, you really got to go hardcore, um, with that. Now, one way to really know if so, so then there's like, well, people think, well, I have been doing lower carb or low carb, so how do I know? Um, or, but I'm still not losing weight. Well, you can look at a few markers and a few values. One of them is your triglyceride marker. So, which is, you know, a number that most people, when they get annual blood work every year, they get, you know, their triglyceride number checked as part of like a, you know, a minimal cholesterol panel. Um, if your triglycerides are over 100, you are absolutely, um, eating too many carbohydrates and that's actually showing that you're insulin resistant if your number is over 100. Now, really you even need to be below 80. I, I would even argue if you want to be super ultra healthy, if you're above 80 on your triglycerides, um, you're also either, you're probably pre-insulin resistant eating too many carbohydrates. So, you know, long story short with the carbs is that you got to be under 40, all right, with zero, zero uh, grains and zero um, processed sugar and very minimal fruit, okay? So, doesn't take much to hit that. Um, in fact, just to, to compare this, so the on like the food pyramid, if you were to follow that um, every single day on average, that would equate to about 250 carbohydrates. So that's six times greater than what it really takes for the average person to be in fat burning. So no wonder why nobody burns fat. Okay, so yeah, if you have a, a triglyceride number of 275, you are ridiculously insulin resistant, and I bet you have a hard time. Um, losing weight or probably have some hormonal challenges like PCOS or fibroids or things like that. It is what it does to your body. So um, now again, like I said, at the, at the seminar, I'll be, I'll be talking about how to test to figure out exactly what number you need because for some people, um, you can get away with more carbohydrates. Um, but again, 40 is kind of an average starting place. So for protein tolerance, um, the kind of general rule of thumb here is that you take your total body weight and you're going to divide by um, 2.2, which is how many uh, pounds are in a kilogram, all right? So um, as an example, if you weigh 200 pounds, you would need to be doing around, uh, you would need to stay under 90 grams of protein um, a day as well, okay? So the problem with protein is that even when people are low carbohydrate and then you're still not losing weight, there's really a couple, I mean, there was multiple reasons, but two of the most common ones, uh, three of the most common ones are, A, you're still getting too many carbs for yourself. Uh, number two is too much protein, because if you have too much protein, you're going to um, be converting that protein into sugar via a process called gluconeogenesis. So, um, you know, you have, think about having like, too many eggs, not not say too many eggs, but let's say you have a lot of eggs in um, the morning and then you have like a big chicken breast salad for lunch um, and let's say for dinner you have, I don't know, a steak, a steak and, you know, like broccoli or something and you're like, well, why the heck can I lose any weight? I haven't had any carbohydrates there or very little and yet you're having like 30 grams of protein for breakfast. Um, you know, you're at like 40 or 50 grams of pr uh, protein for lunch with that chicken breast, especially if it's a large one and not to mention if you have any nuts on there or you're snacking with nuts or you're having, you know, apple and peanut butter, or ap apple and almond butter for snacks. And then you're having a huge steak at nighttime or a couple burgers, let's say, and then you're like another 40 or 50 grams. So easily you're over like 120, 130 grams of protein right there. And then you're wondering why you're not losing any weight, eating low, low or no carb. And it's, well, it's because your protein's probably converting into sugar and just, you know, destroying your body um, from that standpoint. So, um, again, and even some people, again, might even need to be a lot lower than um, that number, but that's kind of just, again, a very general rule of thumb. And, again, I'll talk about testing and how to know um, <clears throat> what your number is at the seminar. So for fat, now, with fat, this is really wide open, full throttle, and um, 
you know, the goal is really ultimately to do as much of this as you can from a wide variety of sources. So, you know, diet variability is really important. So, you know, we need, you got to do more than just like avocado every single day. Although I think you should have avocado every single day, but it needs to be coming from a variety of sources too. Otherwise you're going to be get out of balance on your omega three and six ratio. So there are different types of omega three fatty acids and different types of omega six fatty acids. And if, if you eat too much of one or not enough of one, then it is, it gets out of balance inside of your body. It creates inflammation um, and then again, inflammation creates toxic fat buildup inside of the body. So uh, I think you can get your uh, fatty acids ratios tested. I want to say like 100, 120 bucks. It's not that expensive and it's an at-home blood test. Um, I usually do it at least once a year to know. Like I know one time when I tested myself, um, there's a certain omega-6 that was way too high. And uh, it was because I was eating too much organic, natural peanut butter. And I, was, I mean, I was killing it like every single night. But it was creating inflammation in my body because I was having too much ultimately of a good thing um, with that. So I had to kind of scale back or build, boost up some other ones to get um, on a uh, on a more balanced track. Now, you know, speaking of, of fat, I got a little model. We had we we got these. Uh, they had these in my office earlier today. So this right here, and I'll put this next to my head so you can get perspective on that. This is what one pound of fat. Uh, represented like looks like in the body so here's my hand right that's one pound of fat okay I got pretty pretty decent sized hands so we're talking about the power of losing one two three four or 40 of these things right here that is massive right for the overall health of your body so a lot of times we can discredit working really hard and you step on the scale and you're like oh my god I only lost three pounds I'm like well if you lose three of these suckers right here like that is super amazing and this right here, okay, it's like an old cell phone, right? This right here is um, like five to six pounds, or it may even be seven pounds of fat in your body. Like it's, this is bigger than my head, right, from that. So like this is why we do these things, folks, is that I mean, if, imagine if you have two or three or four or five or ten of these too many on your body, like how is there any way you could be, you know, as healthy as you want to be there? So this is what the seminar is all about and why you're on Facebook Live here tonight is to lose this blubber right here, right? This garbage right here that has no uh, business being on your body. So when it comes again to eating fat, if you want to be burning fat, the best way to do that is to feed it good healthy fat, all right? So you got to be getting from a wide variety of sources, butter, coconut oil, um, avocado, meat fat, saturated fats for meats, like, you know, eating the fat on your steak. Don't cut it off. Eat it. Um, let's see. What are some others? So nuts would be a pretty good source too. Um, you know, things like flax seeds, flax oil, chia seeds, hemp seeds, um, hemp oil. And, um, you know, you know, there's the kind of list goes on and on, oh, you know, full fat dairy, like, you know, whole, whole milk, or I should say like heavy whipping cream in your coffee. Um, I don't really drink milk other than a little bit of cream in my coffee. Um, so I shouldn't say that, you know, things like cheese, like full fat cheese, full fat sour cream, right? So those are the kind of things that you want to be getting, again, from a wide variety of sources to stay balanced. Otherwise your body will get out of balance and it's going to create inflammation. So, you know, as a starting point, I would say you want to get well over a hundred grams of good, healthy fats per day, like way over. All right. Um, I mean, that would just be a minimal starting point. And so, again, what you need to kind of look at, and here's how you can calculate this, is if you take what you ate today and go on Google, um, like, here, let me give you an example here. So if you were to, you know, go on Google here and you're like, okay, so nutrient, hold on, let me just type it out and then I'll show it to you. All right, so for example, for an avocado, one let's just do one avocado, okay, one avocado here. So you're looking at, you're getting 29 grams of fat from one avocado, which is awesome. And then if you type that in, you can see here, so here's kind of the breakdown. Um, 
So you see 17 carbs in that. So you wouldn't want to do much more than that, right? Okay, um, as far as that goes. But you can see how even if you ate two avocados in a day, like you hit your, you hit your carb content right there. So four grams of protein, okay, but 30, almost 30 grams of fat. And then you could do something, let's say, um, butter. So in one tablespoon of butter, all right, you got 12 grams of fat. So that's that's minimal, but you know, zero carbs, right? So, man, I'm talking like I eat this stuff probably four or five tablespoons at a time. I'll melt them on veggies and sweet potatoes and things. Not sweet potatoes. I'm saying trying to stay low carb, but um, you can see that's where you're going to get a lot of good fat with zero carbohydrates there. So butter absolutely needs to be a massive part of your diet, um, your nutrition. Another one you could do is, let's say, coconut oil. So one tablespoon of coconut oil, you're getting 14 grams of fat. Again, uh, no carbohydrates there. Okay, um, what's another one? So coconut milk. So one tablespoon. I do this thing by the cup at least. So look at this, one cup of um, coconut milk is 57 grams of fat, which is pretty awesome. Um, and only 13 carbohydrates there. So good, good, good stuff. So you see, to see, you get an idea of you can kind of figure out what you've done in a, uh, on a daily basis and, you know, kind of work forwards or backwards um, from there. Key stuff. Now, to break through some weight loss um, plateaus, I'll give you one, um, uh, one let's see, uh, idea, kind of strategy. Actually, I'll give you two strategies to do that. Number one is intermittent fasting, all right? And uh, most of you that have been following me for a while or a patient have heard me talk about that before, but it really does work for jump-starting metabolism. Um, basically, what you do is you don't eat for, um, you only eat all your food in like an, uh, anywhere from a six to a 10-hour window, depending upon, um, you know, how kind of a sensitive to insulin your body is. But, you know, it does create insulin sensitivity, and when you're not having food all the time, it forces your body to burn stored fat for energy, okay? Especially if you're having high-fat, low-carbohydrate meals in your window. So when you do so, again, like it runs out of carbohydrates to burn. So the next thing it's going to go for is the fat storage that you have in your body to burn that and um, get rocking and rolling. The second one that, you know, some of you are going to think I'm crazy for this here, but it, it really does work, and it's called thermogenesis. Um, especially on the, from the cold standpoint. So shocking your body with um, cold temperatures works very, very, very well to stimulate and burn fat, especially very stubborn fat. So um, there's this stuff called um, brown adipose tissue. It's a specific type of fat. And um, the only way, and so, uh, hold on, so, let me just read my notes here. Brown adipose tissue generates heat by burning white adipose tissue, which is found in your stomach, butt, hips, and legs. Okay, so think about pretty, basically all the stubborn areas of fat that you have on your body right now. So um, in, normally, in order to exercise or fast, okay, um, that's how you activate burning that type of fat there. But when you do cold thermogenesis, so when you, when you do like a cold shower or even better, an ice bath, you will actually immediately within seconds of doing that will be burning, initiating that fat. So I've, I've read anywhere that it can increase your metabolism by up to 400% um, by doing this, um, by doing ice baths, okay? Cold shower is a kind of a way to start. So you could just start by doing that a little bit. A, a it's going to wake you up in the morning. But I'm telling you, you do an ice bath, um, you know, put like five pounds of ice and you, you submerge your whole body up to your neck and through there. And um, you will be, your metabolism will just crank up because you're going to be shivering, which is good, all right? That's part of why it, it because it's every single muscle in your body is firing to keep you warm, right? Think about burning, right? Energy for heat, burning, it's shaking to get that energy going. And honestly, it's not that bad as you think. I mean, if, I mean pro athletes do it. I mean, high level people do that. And like, I've never seen a fat, you know, pro athlete, all right? So cold thermogenesis is super, super healthy. And I'll talk more about that um, at the seminar. So I'll, I'll stop here now, and um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and uh, type those in the comment section. Otherwise, if you're just joining us um, or just got on here recently, you can go ahead and please share this and like. Okay, we, I appreciate it so we can keep spreading the message for people to hear that. So questions, fire them away. Um,
go ahead. Yeah, so for intermittent fasting, great question. So what you're doing is you're eating all of your food and all of your meals only in a specific window. So when I do that, I typically do either 12 to 8 p.m. or 1 to 9 because it's just easier for me to, I guess if you will, not eat in the morning than it is to not eat dinner at nighttime. Um, plus, I, just, I usually get off work pretty late. So you your first meal of the day starts when that window opens, okay? So essentially, you're... Again, your first meal, if you're going 12 to 8, you don't eat anything before noon. You start eating then, and then you don't eat anything after the window closes, which, you know, again, would be, I say 8 hours is a good place to start. Um, 10 if you think you're going to struggle. And um, so 10 hours, and if you can, so start there maybe if you're like, if you think your really, metabolism is really screwed up. And then, um, then you can work your way to eight. And then ultimately, if you're doing enough fat, you should be able to get even down to four or six and eat like one, uh, you know, even just one meal and maybe one snack a day. So, um, so that that's kind of basically it. Who is Nick going to pick tonight on the bash here? He is going to pick the um, French Canadian girl. I forget her name right now, but I married a French Canadian. and They're pretty awesome. So I think it's going to be her. So, um, what do you say? Okay, well, the, the plan I just went over there is exactly what you would need to do. Um, so, to, to lower the triglycerides down. So, A, you're insulin resistant right now. So, you could do things that are going to increase your insulin sensitivity. So, um, like cinnamon, lemon juice, um, there's something called berberine, is really good for increasing your insulin sensitivity. Uh, B vitamins will do that. But essentially, the only way to do it is you just you gotta go you gotta just go way low carb again high fat like I was saying and get really into a, a state of what I what, what's called not I call it but it's called keto ketosis all right or um, burning which is burning fat burning ketones instead of sugar for energy so um, yeah you're eating way too and actually one of the number one things that will increase triglycerides is fruit so fruits another thing so if you eat a lot of fruit fruit can really spike up your triglycerides um, so that would be probably one good place to evaluate if you're having too much fruit keep them coming good question so far yep that's what i thought So, you know, losing, losing belly fat, um, you know, ultimately that's low, having low testosterone will make it more difficult to lose belly fat specifically, um, or having high, uh, high cortisol, which they kind of go hand in hand, really, really as cortisol goes up, that causes testosterone to go down. So, um, supporting your adrenal glands is, is going to be, you know, really helpful. So that would be like having good amounts of, uh, like, like sea salt, Celtic, you know, uh, what do you call it? Himalayan sea salt or just sea salt in general. Celtic sea salt is really good to help support your adrenals. Um, other herbs like, uh, ashwagandha is really good or green, like decaffeinated green coffee tea extract. Um, and then also just to, to increase your uh, testosterone, honestly, a really simple way to do that, well, A, first of all, if you're insulin resistant, so again, having too many carbs, it'll lower your testosterone, but um, kind of a little hack or cheat, if you will, which can increase uh, testosterone is consuming Brazil nuts, um, especially at nighttime. So you having a couple of Brazil nuts every night will um, kind of slowly, steadily bump up your testosterone, which helps make it easier to burn fat. And that goes for, the same thing goes for women too. Um, you know, women need testosterone and, um, but yeah, like I, I would, I would know, you know, what your, you know, what your testosterone levels are and figure that out. Or if you might have too high of estrogen too, could also do that. Um, could also make it hard to lose belly fat. At my seminar, which is actually, you is going to be at, uh, Iron Tribe at the end of the month. I'm going to cover how I went from 9% body fat down to 4.8 in 10 days. So 
Um, I didn't really have any belly fat left after I did that. So that's some good stuff right there. So yeah, you don't want to have belly fat like this on your body. Okay. Yes. Uh, hello, please lose me, burn me. Just, every time I see this, I think of those old cell phones. One of my friends in high school had one of those or junior high. So, Good questions. Keep them coming. I'll, I'll stay on for a little bit longer. I'm getting some good ones here that, that I think that everybody's finding value in. So, um, yeah, I, this is like, I need to weigh it exactly. It said it was five pounds when I ordered it, but I actually think it's a little bit heavier than that. It honestly feels more like maybe seven or eight if I had to guess. Um, so, I mean, nonetheless, I, I know this is, is one pound right here for sure. So, like, if you look at my fist there, all right, that's one pound of nastiness there. Be, uh, easy way to know how big, a, how much a pound of fat is, right? Just look, pull out a pound of butter, right? And just imagine that smeared all over your body. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, that's fat right there. I'm not going to imagine that smeared all over your body. That would just be weird. So, um, Brazil nuts, I, I, Whole Foods um, is easy to do that. Um, other ways to boost testosterone, you can also take a supplement called DHEA. You can also do that. <clears throat> the only thing I would caution about that, I wouldn't do it long term, is because if your body is producing, um, is converting testosterone into estrogen, then you'll feed your estrogen too. So you gotta make sure you're not doing that, which is why a hormone test is kinda helpful in that situation. But in general, DHEA can, it can, and can kinda soup up your uh, testosterone levels too. Sleep is also huge. You know, even losing a couple hours of sleep a night um, and not getting enough, you'll, your testosterone will, will slowly just kinda go down, uh, go downhill. So um, yeah, that's a good question. Apple cider vinegar before meals. Apple cider, vin apple cider vinegar, excuse me, in general is just really good. So, um, yeah, I mean, before meals, after meals, during meals, like you just, it's all, it's all good. I mean, have that on a regular basis for sure. Um, cause there's just a lot of good stuff in it. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. There's some thought that it could increase your stomach acid a little bit in doing so or stimulate that, which helps break down food, um, a little bit better. So, Another fun tip here for kind of in increasing your metabolism would be to chew your food. So um, like chewing your smoothie is even is even what you should be doing. So like because if you don't chew enough, you don't – your chewing is what initiates the digestive process in your stomach. It actually secretes the digestive enzymes. So I know I was guilty of this for a long time. Um, I would just literally chug smoothies like crazy. And I mean, I do like zero chewing action. Well, think about it. The caveman didn't have blenders. So having liquid, anything other than water, like just didn't exist. So it's actually quite unnatural if you think about that. So, um, I now chew my smoothies. All right. And it's, it feels kind of weird at first, but I mean, I'm just, I just, just kind of, you know, make the motion of chewing smoothies to at least to in get, increase that, those, get those digestive juices flowing um, for that. So yeah. Um, I don't know if it's Marin or Marin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. You can, if you want to message me just privately, I can give you information about, about doing that. So, um, be yeah, I one-on-one -on -one is cool. So chewing your food, so chewing your food, drinking your food. So chewing your smoothie, drinking your food. Oh, Aaron like Karen, perfect. So chewing your smoothie, chewing your drinks, and drinking your food. So meaning you should be chewing, especially like tough protein sources like a steak, for example, or beef. Like you should really be chewing that till it's liquid, um, pretty much in your mouth. So um, make sure you uh, are doing that too. Otherwise, you could just be having some issues with your digestive system too. So yeah, it's Karen. It's being recorded as we speak, so it'll you'll be able to go back and watch it on my profile um, from the beginning as soon as I'm done recording. So you're on. Um, do I want to give any way any more of my secrets? Um, 
from the seminar? I don't think so because it's too good to not be there in person. So remember the seminar on March 25th, uh, which is a Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m., is going to be epic. Uh, it's literally my best stuff. You know, I'll, I'll have to say that in the office, it's been a little frustrating to, to a certain degree that, um, you know, when 80 to 90 percent of people want to lose weight and then we provide a seminar specifically on that topic, 75 percent of people are giving excuses or, or just aren't taking action on that. I got to tell you, as, as your doctor... That's super annoying. All right. Now, at the end of the day, too, I, I kind of go to I go to sleep at night, um, you know, knowing that hey, if people want it, they're going to go, and if they truly want to make the changes, they're going to go and they're going to find a way. Um, but I just, you know, want to call some of you out on that. Is that if you really want to lose weight, then you got to ask yourself: Are you taking action right now, or are you willing to, to take the time and the, and, the, and the necessary steps in order to do that? So. It's easy to say I want to lose weight. It's another thing to actually do the freaking work. You know what I mean for that. So um, do the freaking work. Mic drop. Mic drop. I'm not going to drop my phone though because that will be loud. Best way to gain healthy weight without increasing fat. Uh, I, I mean I know some ways. It's honestly not my specialty. Um, for most people, you know, here's the thing. Ben Greenfield is somebody really good to look up. Uh, ben Greenfield, like Green and Field, he um, talked. He's a really high level athlete, and you know, one of the fittest people I think in the world. And he has um, action plans and how to do what I'm talking about specifically, like you know, more specifically for sort of building muscle, if you will. Honestly, for me, the way I look at it, I mean, whatever I work out, if I'm eating healthy, my body's going to build the, build the appropriate amount of quality muscle that needs to happen. So uh, I mean, I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but pound for pound, I am, you know, probably in, in a high percentage of, of strength for my weight. Um, and I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying, like, for me, I care more about efficiency and speed and power than I do care about how big, you know, useless muscle is. Because a lot of times muscle is just for show and it's actually useless um, on, the, on the body. So it's not a great question, but I, I would look up Ben Greenfield. He's a, he's a good resource um, for that. So Ben Greenfield. So decreasing body fat percentage. I mean, again, it's, it's tapping into your fat burning capabilities. So, um, Karen, if you go back to the beginning when this video is over, I already covered how to do that and I'll be covering more at the seminar. But if, if you are burning fat and, and really in a state of like ketosis, your body fat percentage will go down proportionally to the level of weight that you're losing. So, um, remember you can lose weight if, you, if you're losing weight and you're not losing a much body fat percentage all you're really doing is losing weight that you're going to gain back very quickly or with not that much effort um so if the body if the weight number is going down but the body fat percentage isn't going down well then you're it's just going to be temporary so the only way to lose that fat percentage is to get your body more insulin sensitive and, and really into a fat burning state um, to do that because then you'll lose the, you'll lose the weight for good and actually reset your adipostat, which is kind of like think of like a fat thermostat. So you'll get that lower and then it'll be a lot easier to stay at that number and, or, or move down from that than, be, than being stuck up at a high level. So good questions. I love it. This is fun. I had a record day in my office today. We saw... 140 people, and I'm still going strong at 8.35 at night, and we'll be able to catch the Bachelorette, see who he picks. I'm going to uh, post the link for the seminar in the comments for those of you that haven't seen that yet. You can register right there, so it's good stuff. Come on, more questions. Who else wants to uh, go to the next level? So 
Marin like Karen was transparent and said what was going on with her. And so we, I gave her some action steps and strategies. Yeah, these are my blue light glasses here. Oops, I know it's backwards. Let's see, you can't see it. They're Gunner, G-U-N-N-A-R. So, yeah, since I'm on technology right now and I don't want to fry my brain, I've got my blue light glasses on. Gunner, G-U-N-N-A-R is the ones I get. Um, they're good stuff. They're like 60 bucks. They're not too expensive. So who wants to go to the next level? Or has a question? Truth. Priorities, yes. Okay, so yeah, um, you know, with let me just speak to hormone um, problems in general. So the majority of like reasons that would lead to something like a hysterectomy or to uh, like uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, uterine fibroids, things like that. There's really going to be two causes that create that. So number one is that it's um, insulin. Again, insulin sensitivity issues will cause hormones to become out of balance. And as hormones get out of balance, it'll just create essentially um, toxic, um, or not toxic, well, yeah, toxic cells or abnormal cells in the body. So, But then it also creates an issue what's going to be called estrogen dominance. So I know some of these things that we've heard already, but ultimately means that if you're still having horm some hormonal issues or some like kind of weight issues with that, you haven't dialed in enough of where you need to be uh, carb, fat, protein wise in order to know like why your body is not responding or why, why or I guess I should say it is responding, but it's not responding in the way that you want it to. So I, I would probably just guess that carbohydrate level is too high. You're, you're probably, you know, um, Nora, my guess is kind of from our from previous conversations that you may still be like up in the carbs around like the 60s or the 80s, and you might really need to go down to like 20 or 30 carbs in a day for like a month to to get that kind of trending downward again. So just doing like a super high fat diet, kind of moderate low low moderate protein. Um, um, diet for like a month will probably get that trend in the right direction again. So, um, Mr. Gray, yeah, you want to go to the next level. So the, here's just the, in general, how I go to the next level. And this is how you do it in any, any area of your life. Um, there's a book written by Grant Cardone called 10 X. Um, I would highly recommend you people get that on Yenon, you can get that book as well, How You Go 10X in Life. And what he does, he really breaks down, like, if you're here, okay, and you want to go here, it's not just as simple as, like, doubling the work. You really need to go 10 times after something. So um, an example is people say, I can't lose weight, I want, but I want to lose weight. Well, then an example of 10X in your life in that would be, well, why don't you do, why don't you do 100 burpees a day, start with that, and um, I bet you'll lose some weight. You know what I mean? You can always go harder at something than you are that you than you think you are, and that's how you go to the next level. So if you wanna if you wanna make a million dollars in a year, you really gotta work hard enough and so that so much that you're trying to make ten million. All right, just as an example. Or if you want to make a million, well then you gotta or you want to make a hundred thousand, well you gotta work as hard as a millionaire would need to work in order to do that. And that, I'm just using money as an example. If you um, you know, want to save ten thousand dollars? Well, then you got to live in such a way that you're trying to save a hundred. Okay, if you want to lose ten pounds, then you got to live like a person who needs to lose a hundred pounds um, would need to live and need to eat. Okay, just as an example. Or if you want to, you know, gain twenty five pounds on your snatch, right? Then you got to you got to lift in such a way that you're trying to gain two hundred fifty pounds on your snatch. All right. Again, I'm just using some terminology. I know you might might get with that, but that's. That's how you do it, right? You just you got to go hardcore, because people 
like what other way is there is there, is there a way of living you know um for that so yeah 10x growth kind of sweet i need to come over to your house and watch that because i because i'm trying to save money so i'm not going to spend money on it so <laughs> stream the stream let me see here i think i missed a few comments so um so what's Neethi, what's the question about melatonin? I just see melatonin question mark. Hustle, grind, fail forward, repeat. It's a good model for your life. Okay, the Granger, the Granger crew, yeah, with that. So, um, you know, honestly, accountability. So it's perfect, right? So you're looking at mom, you know, two daughters. Accountability is is a huge step, all right? I mean, honestly, it's one of the most important things. I mean, accountability is ultimately the, the reason. So that's why for those of you that are coming to the uh, weight loss seminar at the end of the month, if, if you don't have someone close to you and like in your direct circle of influence, whether it's a family member or like a best friend, um, the chances of you walking away from the seminar, even I could give, I'm going to give you the best information you can possibly find anywhere on how to lose weight, feel energy, make your energy go up. The likelihood of you implementing it and, and succeeding long term is going to be very, 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 very low because there, you're going to be probably the only person, excuse me, in your circle of influence that is going to be actually doing something on how to lose this right here. So the way you do it um, is you set goals, all right? So you set a goal. Let's just say, I mean, it could be different. I mean, let's say, okay, I want to lose 10 pounds in a month or, or 5 pounds in a month. Well, then work backwards. So if you want to lose 10 pounds in a month, then you've got to lose 2.5 pounds a week, right? And you have to lose like a little, like around half a pound a day or a little bit less than, all right? So then you can evaluate after five days, have you lost two and a half pounds? And if you haven't, well, then you got to figure out, okay, what am I doing or not doing in order to make that happen? Or when you're a weekend, if, you, if you're not, again, you know, on track with your goal, then you got to reassess and figure out, like, okay, where am I missing the boat here to hit this goal? And, you know, I, I love the accountability aspect. You can create both, like, kind of like a fun reward. So it's like, okay, well, when we hit these goals, we're, the three of us are going to go shopping and you know buy something we wouldn't normally buy or you could do it fun where if um if you don't hit the goal well then you have to buy let's say you know then you you have to buy something for the other for the two of us that we wouldn't normally buy for ourselves so it's ultimately kind of making it fun right with um with each other so sorry my sweat i got my comfy sweatpants on they're getting all kind of bunched up here because i'm getting excited so you kind of set like a negative goal, if you will, where it's like, okay, well, whoever doesn't hit their weight loss goal, whatever that is, has to buy, you know, $25, like a whatever, $25 worth of something that I want, and you, you can't say no, okay? Just to make some fun with it, and you're, again, you're more likely to do it um, with that. So those are kind of some ways there. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not an expert on melatonin, to be honest. Um, I, I, ultimately, you're looking at if you have a melatonin issue, I know I'm jumping around here, and um, you know you're, you're you're you have a brain issue, so I I can see having a melatonin issue is going to screw everything up for sure. So yeah, accountability. Everybody has to have accountability. I I don't know of one successful person in the world that does not have um, accountability of of some kind. You know, and I would even say that the most successful people in the world have accountability for every aspect of their life, okay? I have accountability with my chiropractic practice. I have a mentor who, you know, if I'm not, essentially, I pay, I pay him, like, pay them to, like, if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to, to A, motivate me, but also B, give me the action steps and the strategies to continue to grow and to reach more people and be a better chiropractor for people. I have a financial... Um, planner and advisor that you know I'll be actually sitting down with next week to reestablish and reevaluate what my goals are. Um, you know I do 
go to, um, and my health is actually something I could be a little bit better at that. I mean, I feel like that's one area where I have a lot of mastery over. So, but I'm not saying that I don't have any accountability. One of the things I do to keep accountability for myself is doing testing. Cause then, cause it's like at the end of the day, um, I can think I'm doing good, but testing will kind of provide some own sort of internal accountability. Cause if I see a number getting out of balance, well then I can, you know, I can fix myself if you will. So um, I use a lot of accountability for my health, but I, I still ha- have, you know, my wife keeps me accountable. If I'm slipping up, she'll, she'll crack the whip, you know, right away. Um, she actually is better at staying on track than I am and, and staying, sticking with it. So I'm lucky to, to have her, but yeah, she keeps me on track if I feel like I'm slacking a little bit, but so I do have accountability in that, but yeah, it's, it's good. You got to have accountability. Even if you're a master at something, even masters have accountability, you know, Tiger Woods, when he was at the peak of his golf uh, prowess, you know, the, undoubtedly the best in the world by leaps and bounds. He had, he had coaches. He had multiple coaches. He had coaches for different parts of his swing and different, you know, types of clubs. Um, you know, Michael Jordan had, you know, shooting coaches and, you know, and, and fitness and endurance coaches, right? So they, they everybody had co- have, have coaches that have ever, you know, done amazing things in the world. So get coaching, get mentorship, get accountability um, for sure. All right, let's get some questions rolling here some more. We got, we got a lot of dialogue going here, and I'm liking it. I will stay on as long as the dialogue is quality. Keep it coming. Who else wants to go to the next level? Who needs to lose a few of these guys right here? So the other thing is is a plan, right? Like it's not just to have about having a goal. You gotta have a plan to do that. So as you're mapping them that that out, um, you gotta have a have a written down plan to follow and to execute, all right? And then your accountability will help you stay on track with that. So challenge is gonna be totally different. I I'm not gonna share that all that stuff now, but it's gonna be totally different. Different style of exercise, um, different eating templates. That's that's kind of the gist of it. So there'll be more. There'll be like some shopping tours at Whole Foods. There are going to be some a, a little bit of online uh, stuff, and it's going to be shorter and sweeter actually. So, yep, reverse engineer. That's how you do it. You want to make a million dollars in a year? We got to figure out how much you got to make per month, how much per week, how much per day, how much per hour. You want to lose 100 pounds in a year, well then start, you know, you got to figure out, all right, well that means you have to lose X number of pounds a month, X number of pounds of uh, a week, X number of pounds a day. I'll stay on a few more questions if we get some good stuff here. I see some people registering for the seminar, which is good on email. For those of you that missed my Healthy Heart webinar the other night, um, it was really, really, really good stuff. I mean, heart disease is the number one cause of death in America. So... um, I make sure you get on that and you can find my YouTube channel. If you, if you go on YouTube and search Greenway Chiropractic um, and you can subscribe and you'll get notifications when I do videos, but I got some really killer stuff on there, including more specifically what intermittent fasting is. I have a five minute video on there. I have another video on, um, yeah, my fitness pal, Ellie, you know, is right. Yeah. My fitness pal is the one, um, I have, let's see, How to Cure Allergies Naturally is on there, a bunch of my old seminars. I have the Healthy Heart webinar. I have some thyroid videos on there, which are really good too. I have a uh, detoxification workshop. So basically anything you can think of that you would need to improve in your life right now or you're wanting to learn more about, um, actually, and while you're 
looking at that, I actually have a webinar on how to eat healthy on a tight budget on my YouTube page too there. So um, I can give you a few tips now though in one second. All right, so go on YouTube, Greenway Chiropractic, subscribe and check all those videos. And I, I'm putting probably a new one up there about once every week, every two weeks that are really, really good. So um, yeah, so when it comes to eating on a budget, I'm, I'm honestly, just to be totally transparent, I am not truly the best person about asking me about health and budget in the same sentence. I mean, let me qualify that statement, all right? I will spend whatever it takes to be healthy on my health. That's just bottom line. I, I, I sacrifice other things I could have and could do because of what I spend on my health. Um, because for me, it's the number one commodity that I have. It's the number one investment I could be making. I'd rather my body is my money maker. Um, and not to mention, you know, living a long, healthy life is the number one way to save money and not end up bankrupt from medical bills and disease. So I look at it, my body is the number one thing I could possibly be in, investing in. So for me, like I, you know, I treat my body like an Italian sports car, all right, which means I'd only put the absolute best stuff in there. Now, that doesn't mean that if I could find the best fuel and the best oil, right, and the best parts um, that are exactly the same at a cheaper place, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to look for that, all right? So it doesn't mean I waste money on uh, needlessly, but I... Me and budget is just an, are not a good word because I look at it as an investment. You know, what I, maybe a better question is I need to look at my health. How much am I, you know, willing am I going to get out of my health investment? So um, Costco is a good place. All right, buying in bulk is a good way to do it. There's a, a little bit of more money up front, um, but in the long run, it's always cheaper. So you can buy um, like five gallon pails of coconut oil offline. That you know, like yeah, that's like a hundred and some dollars. Um, Tropical Traditions is the website, but you'll have coconut oil for like three years. So instead of buying those twenty dollars jars every, you know, couple of weeks or whatever, especially if you're killing it, like you can get literally a five gallon pail that'll last you years. Or you could buy it and split it with somebody, and you could fill up your own, you know, mason jars. Um, you know, another like meat option is you can buy massive parts of a cow at one time. Um, Thrive Market's a good one. Amazon Prime is another really good one too, especially if you do subscribe and save. So I have my ca my cans of coconut milk on subscribe and save. So I'm saving, I think, about 15% on each one of those and they just get shipped right to my house. So A, I'm also saving gas and having to go to the grocery store a little bit by letting, you know, letting Amazon pay for that. So um, yeah, so buying in bulk is a good one. Um, and honestly, like... Just price comparison. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm, again, I'm not the best, best person on that. Yeah, not the mortgage and the light bill. I mean, I, I get it. 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 But investing money in your health now will you will never regret that when you're 100 years old and able to play with your great-grandchildren. You will never be like, oh, dang, I regret eating all that coconut milk and coconut oil and grass-fed beef. Like, man, what a waste that was. Meanwhile, you're like chasing after your great-grandchildren running around, you know, having fun. Like, no, said no one ever, right, as the saying goes. Okay. I regretted being healthy and taking care of myself. Said, hashtag, said no one ever. <laughs> But I would bet almost every single person, every single person would, um, that's on their deathbed and their body's destroyed and they have no money left, wishes they would have taken better care of themselves at one point. So yeah, again, I mean, best paying job, I mean, again, 10 extra life. Well, I would look at the number of hours in, that I have available in the day and how, where can I hustle and where can I grind, right? Um, you know, I know that if I had trouble paying for, you know, stuff for my family, like me and my job, I get off at 6.30 some nights. I mean, who says I can't Uber until midnight every night? If you got a car, you can Uber, right? I mean, there's, there's a way to, you, you might be able to make an extra three to $500 a month right there. Boom, there you go. You're paying for your car potentially, and you're putting some extra money in your pocket that you can invest in your health. 
So um, Uber. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk has some great tips on how to hustle and grind and, and, and really just kill it um, in your free time too. So you could, um, you know, you know, you're a guy that you could, you could do some, you, you could provide a cheaper option, if you will, for um, some personal training. Just meet, have people meet at your apartment complex or wherever you are right now and maybe charge them whatever, five, ten bucks to do a 30-minute session with you and just show, show, show them some things. A, you're getting experience. Um, B, you're doing them a benefit because you know more than they do, but you're also um, not necessarily maybe certified in something specifically, but you, like you're, you're still knowledgeable because you know more than most people. So you're, you're making a little money, you're building your experience and your portfolio, and um, you're giving people a good service that they wouldn't ultimately do on themselves. So um, like for me, again, I'm like, I, 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 you can't give me an excuse on um, something that if it's truly important for you, like you find a way, you know, and I'm not trying to say that to be harsh. I'm, I'm trying to say that to help you get creative, and this is for everybody. If you're struggling to afford the things that you want that you want to afford and you know you need to, like figure it out, right? If there was a gun to your head and you needed to find a million dollars tomorrow, I can get and you know the the trigger was going to be pulled at six a.m. I guarantee you'd find a way to do it, right? You'd find a way to do it. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's just it's the truth. You'd find a way to do it. Or if it was, you know, my mentor would be like, hey, if you're um, if you're if there's a gun to your kid's head, like, and you need to find a million dollars in an hour, I guarantee you would do it. You would like go rob every stinking bank you could in the next hour, <laughs> and you know what I mean. And you'd get that money, right? It's just it's just the reality. So, I, I know I'm using an extreme example, but the importance is that you if if there's a if if there's a big enough why, the what and the how and the where and the when and the who, just disappears if there's a big enough why, if there's a big enough reason to do it. Yeah, stocking up for sure. I mean, I, I will like, gosh, in fact, this bone broth was on sale the other day and I literally bought like 15 of them and my freezer is completely full uh, right now of, of some bone bone broth. So like, cause it was, it, you know, I, I'm like, I'm gonna buy this stuff a lot. So it saved me, you know, like $30 there. I mean, it cost me more upfront, but if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna be buying it over the next, you know, ever, forever, like I might as well save the $30 now that I can, you know? Um, or so for sure stock up. Okay. I'll wait a few more minutes. Everything has been going good here. This is some good content, good content. You know, remember too, like testing, not guessing super huge to do. I mean, ultimately, that could be the answer for any reason like X, Y, Z. You, you're, you're suffering from this or struggling with that. Um, like if there's a problem, there's a test, and a test will show the cause, right? Figure out the cause, and you'll have your cure there. Figure out the cause, and you'll have your cure. Well, if you're on right now and you found this valuable and you haven't liked and shared yet, I would appreciate that. Um, you know, the bigger this audience get, not that I'm the only one sharing truth here on health on the internet, but, but the bigger the audience gets, um, you know, listen, the more that we can transform this world here and transform, you know, our community specifically on, um, you know, in, in, in this Raleigh-Durham area. I mean, that that's the whole reason why my wife and I opened up this clinic here in Raleigh was to not just be another chiropractic clinic, but really be a health center uh, and transform the way that people view and manage their health. I mean, I, I literally in my mind see a day when, and I'm not saying necessarily it's me, but I believe that the maximized living principles, the principles that the body heals itself and, it, and the body needs no help, it just needs no interference, We'll be running the oncology department and the pediatric department at hospitals like Duke and UNC and Rex and Wake Med, right? No more pharmaceutically driven, you know, uh, agendas and practices, but it's literally going to be people coming in. They're sick. Well, let's figure out why. Let's get down to the cause. 
you know, and chiropractors are the ones that are running that because there's no better doctors in the world that are trained on how to look for cause. It is our fundamental difference in how we are different than medical doctors is that we determine cause, right? See, medicine is about studying what makes a person sick and what causes them to die or what, what, why, a per, you know, that a person is sick and causes them to die. Chiropractic is about what makes a person healthy and studying what causes them to live, right? It's literally a diametrically opposed philosophy and practice. And we have to wake up and look around and see that the medical model way of thinking is not only breaking, but it is broken. And it is like the freaking Titanic, which is sunken at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean right now, Arctic Ocean. It's literally just, it's, it's tanked, all right? And unfortunately, it's sucking people down with them. So this is why we do these, why I do these Facebook, you know, uh, videos. I, again, I had a, the busiest day I've ever had in practice today, adjusted 140 people in six and a half hours. And, um, you know, I'm still here for you guys for an hour tonight to show you how to do this because it's just like, if not me, then who else, you know, and I live my life that now I'm not saying again, I'm not saying I'm the only one, but I live my life that if I was the last chiropractor on planet earth, that I would speak the truth until the day that I die and make sure as many people got to hear that as possible, right? So, and that's a good way to live your life too, is that if you were the last person on planet Earth that knew what you now know about health, would the principles live on because you, you would tell everyone you possibly could? Maybe it's not your burden. You might have another calling or burden right there too. But I mean, sharing health, you know, is a great, great, great responsibility that we all have um, no matter what. So with that, I will end. Peace out. I love everybody on here. Thanks for your time. Have a good night. And um, have fun watching to see who The Bachelor picks on ABC.